I used to dream poetry in my sleep. Sometimes I would get lines that seemed to be a little better than I could get when I was awake. One uh, time, about ten days before Easter, an editor who had been giving me a good deal of publicity, he was editor of a newspaper, and I didn't write for newspapers, but uh, he was uh, giving me a great deal of publicity and he thought a great deal of my work. And he wired me about ten days before Easter asking me for a poem on Easter. He wanted to put it on, uh, in a box on his front, the front page of his Sunday edition. I told my wife, he didn't understand. I said, I have no poems on Easter in my system. And I'm working on the Song of the Indian Wars. I don't want to quit. And she said, I said, I have no thoughts whatever. And she said, oh, wait until morning. Don't wire him tonight. Maybe something will happen. Uh, he offered me fifty dollars for f four lines, eight lines, or twelve, whatever I wanted to write. Well, that was money in those days, and you could buy a good many groceries with it. But uh, I went to bed uh, and did as I always did, repeated the lines I had been working on that day, because I realized that if I did that as I fell asleep. My subconscious mind would carry on, it would go on and on and on and on, and probably do something good in the night. Maybe it wouldn't. It might uh, make something just foolish, but uh, sometimes it would make something good. So I repeated the lines I'd been working on in the Song of the Indian Wars, and uh, I dreamed. But I didn't dream about the Song of the Indian Wars. I dreamed I was in a, a dark room. It was black, I could see nothing, but it was full of voices, and the voices were full of, were the voices of men, and those men were real poets. I knew because my business was criticism, and when I heard a good poet, I knew he was good. These fellows were good, but the trouble was no one would let anyone finish his poem. They would interrupt each other. And I'd get only fragments of lines and rhymes and feelings and and uh, pictures, little flashes of pictures. And I got up in the morning and I went and told my wife about it. I felt tired as though I'd been working all night. And I told my wife and she said, can't you put those pieces together? I said, no, they are not related. It's all like r colored rags in a rag bag. They don't belong together. And uh, I said, I, anyway, I'm working on the Song of the Indian Wars. And uh, I went into my study as usual. And as my custom was, I began by reading a hundred lines back to get a running start again, to get a running start, a hundred lines back, so that they would knit in together and all flow like a stream. And uh, I pulled my hundred lines back and began to read them. I didn't know what I was reading. It just sounded like nonsense. And I push it back and pull another hundred lines out and read. Didn't seem to mean anything. I feel those pieces trying to come together in, back in my head someplace. Pieces that I dreamed trying to come together and they weren't making sense. And I got up and I went out to the breakfast and I told my wife about it. And uh, she said, can't you put those pieces together? And uh, I said I didn't think I could, and I went back into my study and uh, tried to uh, tried to make some sense out of the hundred lines. There was no sense. Finally, I just pushed those lines back and began to put in those pieces together. And uh, they clung pretty well, and got so they just fell into place. And I went out and read it to my wife, some of my best poems. It wasn't more than 15 or 20 minutes till uh, I had it finished. Once more, the north-bound wonder brings back the goose and crane, prophetic sons of thunder, apostles of the rain. In many a battling river, the broken gorges boom. Behold, the mighty giver emerges from the tomb. Now Robins chant the story 
of how the wintry sword is litten with the glory of the angel of the Lord. His countenance is lightning, and still his robe is snow, as when the dawn was brightening two thousand years ago. Oh, who can be a stranger to what has come to pass? The pity of the manger is mighty in the grass. Undaunted by December, the sap is faithful yet. The giving earth remembers, and only men forget. <laughs>